Can you imagine a time when children weren't able to go to school, they weren't able to grow up playing with their friends, and there weren't any laws protecting their rights? Instead, children were forced to work at very young ages, for li very little pay, and in some of the most deplorable conditions imaginable. These types of conditions occurred not only for children, for much of the British population during the Industrial Revolution. During the 1800s, the Industrial Revolution spread throughout Britain. The use of steam-powered machines led to massive increase in the number of factories. As the number of factories grew, people from the countryside began to move into the towns looking for better paid work. The wages of a farm worker were very low, and there were less jobs working on farms because of the new inventions and the use of new machines such as the seed drill. There were, however, lots of jobs in the new factories, mills, and mines. As people moved into the city, housing became a problem, so factory owners built the houses for their employees. The workers' houses were usually near to the factories so that people could walk to work. They were built really quickly and cheaply. Most had between two to four rooms, one or two rooms downstairs, and one or two rooms upstairs. Most of the houses were crowded with five or more people, possibly crammed into a single room. Even the cellars were full. Most of the new towns were dirty and unhealthy. The household rubbish was thrown out into the streets. And housing conditions like these were a perfect breeding ground for diseases. More than 31,000 people died during the outbreak of cholera in 1832, and lots more were killed by smallpox and dysentery. Living conditions in the cities wasn't that great. Chimneys, bridges, and factory smoke blocked out most of the light in the towns. A layer of dirty smoke often covered the streets like a blanket. This came from the factories that used steam to power their machines. The steam was made by burning coal to heat water. Burning coal produces a lot of dirty, black smoke. In the factory themselves, many of the workers were children. They worked long hours and were often treated badly by the supervisors or overseers. Sometimes the children started to work as young as four or five years old. The mill owners often took in orphans to the workhouses. They lived at the mill and were worked as hard as possible. They spent most of their working hours at the machines with little time for fresh air or exercise. Even part of Sunday was spent cleaning machines. And there were some serious accidents. Some children were scalped when their hair was caught in the machine. Hands were crushed and some children were killed when they went to sleep and fell into the machines. Not all factory owners fed off their employees. Some people like Robert Owen and John Stuart Mills pushed for better conditions and slowly through the factory acts of the mid to late 1800s conditions improved. Mandatory education for children was brought in. And there were limits to the amount of hours children could work, and safety standards were improved within the factories and mines for all. It's nice to know that today in Canada, we don't have to live in the type of housing and work in the same types of factories under the same conditions as people did back during the Industrial Revolution in Great Britain. However, people, and in particular children, are facing the exact same conditions as they did during the Industrial Revolution. The same conditions that were just described occurred right now, in places like India, where children work as bonded laborers in brick kilns, and people making goods that we consume here every day live in dormitories built by the factories they work in in China. What will it take to help improve these people's lives? Who is their Robert Owen or J.S. Mills, and what can you do?